Dude, I'm so nervous. I don't know why. <laughs> Hey chat, it's one minute to go, one minute to go. Thank you for retweeting the tweet, Dino. I appreciate that. Or Crystal, thank you. I'm gonna make sure everybody watches because I don't want anybody who submitted a question to miss it. Because I ain't doing repeats, we ain't doing reruns. No redemption, I'll explain it in a second. Or peep the pin message. So hi for the stream. I'm so nervous. <laughs> What if I just do no face cam? <laughs> nah, 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 nah. I wouldn't do that to y'all. That'd be cruel. Okay, eight, seven, three, two. <laughs> Yeah. Hello, good morning. Good afternoon. Hope everyone is doing well today so far. We had a lot of people chat in the just starting soon screen, so thank you, Crystal, Quack, Kobobo, Keelan, Wolf, Kimari. I think I said Crystal already. <laughs> but thank you guys for chatting. I appreciate you all. I appreciate you all. I am so nervous. Now today what we are doing is as y'all know, this past week I made a little quiz for you guys that a good handful of y'all filled out where we just at or I asked questions like generic ones and then also like I had people ask for advice and then give advice. So if you submitted a question, don't be scared. It's all fully anonymous. I didn't write down names whenever I was writing or when I was prepping my questions. I didn't look at who submitted what so i can kind of assume who submitted whatever question but i didn't look um if you are here and your question gets read and answered you can feel free to self-report and say that it's yours but some of the questions are related to like identity and then sexuality so i don't i don't want to leak you know unless unless you want to leak you can leak um i move my computer so i'm gonna be looking this way but yeah so if you are just coming in and you weren't able to submit a question ahead of time, peep the pin message, you can use your channel points. Um, I did make a new redemption for a thousand points. You can get your question answered today, but it will be near the end because I want to get through everybody who did submit ahead of time, just to be fair to them. So yeah, guys. Um, um, uh, what was I gonna say? I'm live a bit early because I have a boatload of homework to do, so I want to get I want to get in and out. I want to do this quickly. Um, what else should I say? Oh, make sure you're following my Twitter. That's how a lot of people got notified that we were doing this stream. If you aren't able to watch every stream, follow the Twitter. Um, okay, are we ready? Um, so let's go ahead and start with the advice question. So what I did. Cause I'm crazy. What I was gonna do is I was gonna like make graphics, but I felt like that wasn't as cool. So I made little cue cards and they're very cute. This took four hours. Cause I think for the quiz we had 17 people or 18 people take it. And then about 90% of everybody submitted a question or advice. So this took four hours. <laughs> But aren't they cute? Isn't it cute? Also, um, I know that today's stream will be a bit heavier 
It's not going to be too crazy. I will definitely tell triggers if there is a triggering topic. But um, the way I kind of see it today, I know a lot of people see like YouTubers or streamers as like a comfort or like a role model. And I was thinking to myself, not that I want anybody to do this because that's cringe e ego. But you know, feel free if there's a cue card that you like that you want to save for yourself as like a momentous screenshot it at me on Twitter or put it in my replies. Um, talking about like the internet shit that makes me feel good. I had this memory. Oh no. Oh my camera. Uh oh. Hold everybody hold. What the fuck? This is the good capture card. Oh no. Hold everybody hold. Oh no. This was the good capture card. Why is it breaking? Oh no. Oh wait! It's back! Okay, I don't know why that froze. Okay, it froze for a second there, but we're good. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're safe. Anyway. So, as I was writing these cue cards, I was thinking to myself, Oh, okay. Call me cringe, call me cringe. But I had a- I had a Wattpad phase in middle school. And then in turn, I went from a Wattpad kid to a Tumblr kid. So in like late middle school and then early high school, I was really into like fandom stuff. And there was this one Tumblr page. If anybody knows, their account is still up. Because I checked it this morning because I had their account page and a voice memo saved from their account. I bookmarked it. And the account was called Voice Head Cannons. And they were like an aspiring voice actor and they were like voicing out headcanons for different fandoms and there was one that i saved <laughs> it's so embarrassing i saved the audio file and it was called comfort from makoto from free the anime <laughs> and i thought i deleted the bookmark but it's still in my bookmarks <laughs> and the the audio file is just like him pretending to be makoto but like saying nice things to you and, as we learned in yesterday's stream, I like praise, I like comfort. <laughs> uh, that anime is so dramatic? Not really, I think Free is pretty tame. The only, like, angst that happens is when one of the people almost drowns. No spoilers, it's been out for years. But yeah, their Tumblr account hasn't posted in six years. <laughs> but that, that's, that's what my example is. So like I said, if anything I say resonates with you, feel free and clip. If any of these cute cards is something you need to like tell yourself later, screenshot it. Save it for later. Yeah, so... <laughs> um, we do need to get a prediction going. Because yesterday I jokingly said... Will I cry? I don't think I'll cry. But some of the things that we will talk about aren't necessarily triggering, but they do get kind of heavier. So I don't think I'll cry. Prediction will be open for 30 minutes. Did you write all the questions? Yeah, I'm crazy. I'm deaf gonna cry. Yeah, if you cry, type one in the chat. <laughs> when you cry. When you cry. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I wrote all the questions. I wrote all of them down. <clears throat> okay. Wait, wait, I need to get the prediction overlay. Oh wait, no I don't. Never mind, I don't need that on screen. Okay. Oh yeah. So, good question, Kobo, but I was just gonna tie into that. So, all the questions weren't necessarily unique. Some were kind of similar, kind of like the um, advice as well, but I tried to keep them separate still. Some of the questions I left out, someone in the free response just put, um, so I, if you put like a silly response, somebody, somebody's, <laughs> Somebody put a response, can you help me with 9 plus 10? <laughs> so I only really kept the serious responses. <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> oh my god. I'm curious if you put mine, I don't know. Like I said, I didn't see whose was whose. 
Well, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so as I talk, I'm gonna try and keep the cue card up, so I'm gonna be scooted back a little bit. <clears throat> I can't remember what I put. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know who, who to do. Um, okay, first. I'm not gonna land for God, my question. <laughs> Good one. Okay. I also have a written on the back. Should I confess my feelings for my friend, or move on? So this person asked, Oh, also, for the cue cards, I paraphrased, and I also made it sound like more nice. Some responses were too long to fit on the cue card, so if I rewrote it, don't don't be scared. So this person said... Oh, flushed. <laughs> I can't see the back, I have the whole stack. Um, this person says, Confess your feelings to your crush or friend, or should I save the friendship and move on to someone else? How could you cut 9 plus 10? That's not a relationship question. It's not math, but welcome in, Cokes. Can we get some yo's? Okay. We're starting off with this one to start off a bit light. Um, I feel like this is the question old as time. My opinion is, from my lived experience, I have had many crushes on friends. Because there's been, like, studies done to where <clears throat> you're more likely to feel romantic attraction to somebody once you know them on an emotional level. So it makes sense why a lot of people, like, quote-unquote, fall in love with their best friends. Um, there's also been studies done to where a lot of men will fall in love for their female best friends because it's not often they can be, like, emotionally vulnerable with somebody. And in turn they associate love with vulnerability. So there's a lot of levels to it. I think, just in general, just in general, you should only really confess to somebody if you 100% feel and can assume that they feel the same for you. Because I think when you confess to somebody, it does look, put a lot of pressure onto them. And especially if it's a friend. And <clears throat> if you feel like they don't feel the same, then don't say anything. Get over it. But if you feel that they might, go for it. It might work out. You go for it. I don't think you should not confess in the worries that will ruin the friendship. Because, obviously, if you do confess, and if they don't feel the same, uh-oh, it's obviously gonna change the dynamic. But if that person isn't willing to look past it, and still value your friendship, then they probably wouldn't have been your friend in the long term anyway. So yeah. What are we doing the reviews? Um, we reviewed the quiz results yesterday, so you can watch yesterday's vlog. Today we're only looking at the free response questions. <clears throat> Got feeling? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I have confessed many times, all in which they were friends. None of them worked. And it was weird because I felt like they might have felt the same, but not to the degree that I did. And I think it's also different if you aren't, like, conventionally attracted, right? Because everybody has a type, and that's fine. But I think in order for you to pursue someone, like seriously, not casually, you have to like the person, like emotionally like the person. It's the worst when they don't feel the same. I mean, I think it's still better to know for sure than to cling on to that feeling, right? Because if you wallow in that unknown or that uncertainty for too long, you're kind of preventing yourself from possibly seeing other people who might genuinely be interested in you. So don't get hung up on one person, especially if you haven't gone out. Like, I can understand if you can't get over an ex, but that's because there was feelings, right? But if you're hung up on a crush, It's childish, to an extent. I'm saying this as a 20... I'm 23. As a 23-year-old, okay? 
you're gonna look back- if you were like in your teens, or your very early 20s like me, you're gonna look back on your crushes and be like, ah, that's so silly of me. It might feel like it's real, but if there's no mutual feeling, then it's not as real as it could be with somebody else. I know I'm being blunt. I'm being blunt. But the feelings you have for a crush is drastically different than the feelings you would have towards someone who actually for sure likes you, right? Okay, I think. <laughs> so TLDR, confess only if you think they feel the same, if not, move on. Okay. <laughs> Drake's in chat for me. <laughs> Yeah, I need some water. Today's gonna be a lot of talking. Be <laughs> next. What is this? How did this get into the pile? I said serious responses only. <laughs> uh, so this person responded in the, do you want advice? They said, nah, me and your mom have a great relationship. And then they put an angry face emoji. Obviously, this person is an egomaniac and is too confident and naive to show humility. Next. <laughs> there are some goofy ones in here. There are some goofy ones. I know damn well who that is too. Me too. I can I can figure. I don't think they're in chat now though. Sad. <laughs> uh, talking about being in chat. If you're new here, follow the channel. Click that follow button. <clears throat> Next. What if their parents don't like me? Interesting. Um, hmm. Oh, this person said, What would you do if the person that you're dating has parents that dislike you? You know, the way I see it, you're not dating their parents. So they don't necessarily need to like you. They probably will like you over time. I can understand from like a friend point of view why you might be disapproving of a partner. But I think as long as you know that you're doing your best and you aren't harming your partner because the parents are just evaluating you off of assumptions and they're evaluating you off of probably what your partner has told them so it makes sense that they'd like not like you or be opposed to the idea of you dating their their child or their kid so i would say don't take it too personally like it's obviously gonna bother you for a while but that's normal i think It's different if you're like a bad person and then like the parents' concerns are like valid. Okay, that's different. If you're an asshole, then yeah. <laughs> but as long as you know what you're doing is good and as long as you know you're treating your partner fine, screw them. You don't need to go over for dinner every week. You don't need to. <clears throat> Can we do me? All the questions are in random order and if you want to ask a question and you didn't submit one in the quiz use your channel points okay this one hmm <laughs> okay we are a very queer friendly community okay okay so i have a crush but i don't know if they're gay i feel like most queer person has gone through this at some point <laughs> Look how long this question was. This person's psychotic. <laughs> I just wanted one sentence, man. <laughs> okay, let's read this out. 
So my situation is that I have a crush on this person, but I don't know if they're gauge. They actually put gauge in their message. I don't even know my sexuality yet. I've known for the past two years that I'm probably not straight, but since I'd only had questions on fictional characters or celebs with the same gender, I decided it was probably straight, or I was probably straight. But then, I met this person and literally, it's all the things I'm attracted to. Except that they're not POC, but we love our <laughs> Caucasian kings and queens IG. Close parenthesis. And to make matters more confusing, they've done some things that make me think twice, or make me think that they're LGBT. Like one time, <laughs> this is like, okay, bye quick. This is like a diary entry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, it's, it's not over yet, it's not over yet. <laughs> and to make matters more confusing, they've done some things that make me think they're LGBT. Like one time, this person of the opposite gender yelled, F you at them and they said I wouldn't do that you're not my type which had me all sorts of confused so basically can you give me advice on situations like this please crying emoji I see why it took four hours it took you that long to fill out the quiz holy oh why it took me four hours to write it down yeah my I actually got like blisters on my fingers anyway it's fine okay so TLDR I have a crush, but I don't know if they're gay. I think... Okay. There are obviously some, like, clear-cut signs that I feel like most everyone has a consensus about when it comes to, like, seeing somebody and kind of subtly knowing that they're queer. Oh, TBH, a lot of straights make jokes like that, though. That's the point I'm getting to. Because, like, I was initially reading this, and I was like, well, it's obvious that they're making a joke that they're not straight. But then I was like, well, types can mean, like, physical types, like, different types of women. And I was like, fuck. So this, I think that phrase alone is not enough of an indication. I think what you need to do, okay, I feel like it's cliche in every queer person's experience to like or have a crush on a straight person but that's because you probably like them emotionally right and that's fine that's normal but you also have to come to the understanding that if they aren't attracted to you then it's not gonna work you can't make somebody queer you can't make somebody love you if they aren't physically attracted to you because people want different things some people want or some people have more romantic attraction, some people have sexual attraction. So there's a there's a lot of levels to it. So back to this. I think this is more about how do you find out if they're queer or not. Hmm. I think the only real way to know is if they pursue somebody else, right? Because I had a crush on somebody, and I was unsure if they were queer or not. Because I thought, with a little glimmer of hope, they might have been queer because they never had any, like, boyfriend during the whole time I knew them. From, like, middle school to, like, college and shit, right? But you don't know, because if people don't tell, you don't know. So I would say, befriend them more so. I don't know if this is somebody you just like admire or if this is somebody you like kind of know or like an acquaintance. I assume this is high school because you're talking like this is a motherfucking diary entry. <laughs> but, hmm. I think another indicator thing is where this person is saying they've only really liked the idea of somebody of the same gender in like fictional characters or people who are unachievable like celebrities. Okay, so this one is me. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> You'd say you're really good friends with them? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> See, that's another thing. 
It's kind of going back to this one. I don't know. I would honestly say, assuming you're in school, I would say wait it out. Because you don't know <clears throat> like how dynamics will change once you're out of school. Or if this is like college or whatever, you don't know how things will change once you're out of college and you don't see each other as much. And there's also like... Mm. It's like doubly difficult. Because it's like a queer relationship, right? So there's already going to be so many hurdles. So, okay. If they are your friend, I think the conversation of being like, Hey, do you have anybody that you like? And see what they say. And then when they ask you back, be like, Oh, there's this one person I like. And then when they ask who, you say, You. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> no, but you have to ask them first and see what they say first. Just to, like, feel it out. <laughs> because, because... Not the second part. Because, okay, if you ask them first, and they say, oh, there's this one person, and then you're like, ooh, can you describe them? And they're like, no, I don't want to. Then it's probably you, honestly. Honestly. But if they tell you, like, oh, it's, like, Sally in the- in my third period class, then it's- it's GG's. It's GG's. Sometimes you gotta be blunt. Because children are immature. And they can't take hints sometimes. But I would say, if you guys are already friends, not drop hints, but just kind of go for it, you know? I don't know, okay. Next one done, easy. Next. What do you do? I'm gonna do it tomorrow. <laughs> Just have them watch the stream. Watch the stream together. <laughs> okay. okay, what do you do if you feel jealousy? This was an interesting question. Because there's so many levels to what jealousy is. Because to me, jealousy is related to trauma in the sense of either you were wronged in the past or you're scared of being wronged. So I think feeling jealousy is fine. You just cannot let it interfere with your relationship to where it's at a point where it's unhealthy. Um, if it's related to you having trauma from a previous relationship, or, like, parental figures or role models, like, i.e., you, you will see this a lot in people who have, like, divorced families, when you don't have, like, a consistently good role model, or, uh, <clears throat> or if you lived in a household where, like, one of your parents were, like, cheating on their spouse all the time, it's very hard to, like, get past that stigma when you see it or experience yourself. So I can understand why this is a very difficult thing to navigate. Um, for me personally, I never entered- I never wanted to entertain the idea of feeling jealous. Because to me, if I am feeling jealous, then it's something that I need to work on. Because the way I view a relationship, I put my full faith and belief into that person. So if they cheat on me, it's their fault, not mine. I should not be blaming myself. And if my partner wants to talk to somebody else, not romantically, mind you, like just talking casually, they have the right to do so because they need to have a separate identity from myself, right? You can't be overly bearing or too controlling when it comes to letting your partner talk or communicate with whoever they want to. Okay, you, you should not be too controlling in that sense. So I think if you are experiencing this, you need to identify if it's based on your trauma or your own sense of doubt. And either way, 
that needs to be communicated with your partner. Um, obviously, it would have to be at a point to where you feel more comfortable with them. So, for example, if it's based off of trauma, you can pull them aside and be like, Hey, you know, I experienced this and it makes me feel this way. So, um, if I act this way, try to be understanding. And if I ever push any of your boundaries, please make sure to communicate them with that, that with me. For example, um, let's say an individual got cheated on, right? So then after that, um, after, let's say she, after she gets cheated on, she doesn't trust her boyfriend anymore, okay? Understandable. But she also wants to make it work. So then after that, she constantly texts him every hour to see where he is. And he doesn't necessarily like being contacted every hour, but he kind of bears with it because he did the wrong thing by cheating and breaking that trust, that established boundary of, like, exclusivity between two partners, right? But you still need to respect that boundary. And you can't justify actions that are still toxic even if you were wronged and feel jealous. You just need to communicate in a way to where both you and your partner are on equal footing and equal understandings of each other to where it can kind of minimize your feelings of doubt and also not be too much on your partner. And this can be in instances where like nothing bad happened. If you have like doubts from a previous relationships, so you kind of bring that trauma to the new one. You just have to make sure to communicate what you're feeling. It's valid to feel jealousy and your partner should try to come for you to some level. I'm trying to think. I never really felt jealous. Because to me, um, if that person is with me, then I just assumed I have their full care and attention. And they would not look at anybody else in that way. And that just comes from blind faith. Like I said earlier. If they do something wrong, it's their fault, not mine. Sometimes it's hard to give advice when you can't relate. Yeah, that's kind of why, like, I was struggling with this one. But it just comes down to communicating. You need to tell your partner what you're feeling. And tell them why you're feeling what you're feeling. But you can't be too overbearing. Okay, next. <clears throat> You've grown distant. How do I fix this? Okay, so this person said... <clears throat> What's the best way to improve a relationship if both people are slowly not doing many things together? Like going out, hanging out, or texting as much when the relationship first started. This one's interesting. Because this concept is founded on the idea of where you feel like you should be infatuated or in that kind of like honeymoon phase for your whole relationship. Um, people demonstrate and show their care and love through different ways. As we learned yesterday, some people like physical touch, some people like gift giving, some people like doing tasks for others. So I think a lot of young people don't understand what a long-term relationship is meant to be. Because to me, love is care and devotion, but it's also, um, I, I had the phrase, I wrote it down yesterday, <laughs> but it's also like trial and tribulation. Like there's not going to be any perfect relationship, okay? That's not going to happen. There's no fairy tales. There's always going to be obstacles that you have to overcome. And I think a big thing for this, in like your first few months, if it's somebody you were like didn't know before you started going out or you like were friends but you got to know each other more as you dated, 
I think the first few months is where you get to like fully understand who the person is and just in general the more you do something the more bored of it you'll get <laughs> so it makes sense why people tend to distance over time because once you seemingly know everything about this person you're inherently not as intrigued right so I think it's normal to kind of distance as time goes on but you can't let that distance minimize what you truly feel. It's kind of going into the um, concept of you have to make sure you are giving back what you are receiving. So if you feel like your partner isn't putting enough effort into like texting you or hanging out, I think you need to put that effort in as well. And if they aren't receptive to it, I think that's the problem. But you also need to look at, you have to think about why they aren't being receptive. Because just because you can assume that everything is going okay with them, you don't necessarily know everything that's going on. So maybe they, maybe something happened that they don't want to tell you about. Or maybe they have like underlying anxiety or something. And I assume if you're at a point in a relationship to where you're comfortable and it's been an ample amount of time, I feel like you should be able to communicate those things. And if you feel like you don't know how to communicate that, maybe get therapy. Because in order to um, support your partner to your best ability, you need to learn, learn how to support yourself too. TLDR. It's normal to grow more comfortable, and I guess you could say distant over time. But you still need to identify if you still have the same level of care for this person. And make sure that they are still putting an effort into the relationship as well. And if you aren't putting effort in, maybe you got something going on that you aren't facing. Next. <clears throat> okay. This one was interesting. Okay. I got confessed to, but I don't feel the same. Now, hashtag can't relate. <laughs> this person said... <laughs> Um, what do you do if someone confesses their feelings, but you don't feel the same way? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. They put five question marks. Extra as fuck. So this one. Interessante. I think the right answer is, if you don't feel the same, don't lead them on. Don't go out with them. Don't feel like you can fall in love with this person. It's different if you're, like, younger. Because then I think it's fine to kind of, like, experience going on a date or whatever. But don't commit to them seriously. Like, don't lie and say, ooh, I like you too. Because that's not true. And you don't want to build a relationship off of the premise of they're just pinning for you but you don't feel the same for them to the same degree i think it's kind of hard for me to relate to this because i can easily reject someone if it's it'll, <laughs> if it ever happens <laughs> because i need to have that emotional attachment before i can like seriously pursue anyone because i'm not the type of person who wants something casual you know but congrats man lucky you Damn, why are you saying damn? I'm brutal, okay? All I can picture is like, you know how in anime there's the protagonist who gets like a confession every day? <laughs> yeah, I would say... Hmm. Okay. If you, like, confess to somebody, you don't want to answer immediately, right? 
Because I feel like a lot of like kids will be like, oh my god, I like you. But then a lot of people don't follow up on like going on dates and stuff. Or, like you should be like, you know, I like you. We should hang out or we should go out to dinner. But TLDR, if you don't feel the same, then don't pursue them. Don't think you can like them over time. You don't want to lead them on. Okay, we are about... Oh, we have three more left. Three more left. I'm speed running. Okay. I fell for a straight guy. What do I do? What do you do? Okay. If I fall for a straight guy and I'm a gay guy... I don't know why I laughed, I'm sorry. And I fall for a gay guy, how should I get over him? Or should I get over him? They put or stop falling. I think th I think they meant to bet or keep falling. As I said earlier, if this person is confirmed straight, then they probably physically won't like you. And that sucks to hear, but everybody has their own preferences. Like, everybody has their own wants and desires. So even if Let's say the scenario in which you both like each other, like emotionally. That's fine. That's great. But there will come a point to where maybe one or both partners will want something more intimate. But if it's not something one of them is attracted to, then it might not work. And you don't... And I don't think you should pursue something if it's going to most likely guarantee fail. Because then you're just putting yourself through hurt when you could have maybe found somebody who would have liked you fully. It's a very harsh thing to say, but it's the right thing. I feel bad, but don't, don't try to get with straight people if you know they're not queer. Like, don't try. Don't think you can change them. It, it won't work. It's just gonna hurt you. When there are so many queer people, guys. There are so many. There will be somebody who will fall for you. Because... When we were looking at the quiz results from yesterday and the four people who said love isn't real, I think you just have to wait. There are so many people in this world. Billions. Just because you can't find somebody in your hometown doesn't mean love isn't real, okay? There's so many people. And I don't necessarily believe in fate. But if someone comes into your life, it's always for a reason. And if they choose to stay or they choose to go, then that's fine. But don't feel like you need to be with one person. TLDR, don't pursue them if you know they're not queer. It's only gonna end in harm. Sad truth, but... Anyway, next. Sad. I'm sad. Cause like... Y'all know I had a crush on a straight girl. Dude, it's so cringe. Have I told this story before? Should I tell it? My eyebrows twitching. Yeah, basically, I confessed and it was funny. Because <laughs> she basically was like, Yeah, I'm a hundred percent not gay. <laughs> but like, I wasn't sure. <laughs> Looking back, it was cringe as fuck. But then it's like, after I confessed, I felt better. Because then I knew for sure. And then I just... I dropped all feelings I had. It took like two months, but still. I got over it. Are you still friends with her? Um... Not really. But that's not the reason why we didn't stay friends. It was just like... Um... 
she and I both had personality types to where we would like isolate each other. And then because of that, we just stopped talking and that's fine. There's not many people I keep in my bubble. And it's hard for me to like keep people in my bubble if they're like <clears throat> if because like I don't like talking to people sometimes I don't like texting too much so I'm kind of like if you don't text me then I don't text you it's like that okay next is arguing a lot normal this one, I had like a concrete answer, and then I saw a TikTok this morning <laughs> from this like couples therapist, and she was talking about how a lot of people's like couples arguments are caused by like their personal traumas and triggers. And she brought up the example of like the girlfriend getting mad at the boyfriend for not washing the dishes, and then it would ca cause an argument because. Um, she felt like he was breaking her trust by not doing his task and then in turn the boyfriend inherently would feel like he was a failure and it was possibly from like unresolved trauma from like him not having a lot of self-worth so I feel there's a line obviously with how arguments are conducted if your partner is getting violent or to name Kali, that I feel like that is too toxic, right? But before you're getting up to a point in an argument, I think it comes from not being able to communicate effectively. And when I mean effectively, I mean you have to be able to communicate that you have to communicate when the format, I learned this in therapy, it's like you have when you do blank, so an action, it makes me feel blank because blank. When you use that format, it basically explains to your partner how their actions affect how you feel in a way that kind of forces them to empathize with you and under truly understand what you're thinking and feeling. Um, and explaining things in that way helps explains your trauma okay so that type of like discussion needs to happen before the argument gets more heated because I think it's very easy to be like name calling or accusatory and um the last one. I had it. I got it. It's very easy to be accusatory and name calling and bring up like past grudges in an argument because those, all those three, are things that weren't properly communicated in the past. Sorry, I'm reading Wolf's thing. <laughs> And I think hmm. but the problem is not everyone is like willing to communicate so you have to make sure that you're at a point where your partner feels comfortable with you that's why like we learned yesterday I need someone who's like emotionally mature. <laughs> I don't want no immature bitch. I don't want to date no like person who has a mentality of a 19 year old. Oh yeah, so okay. When you're arguing, make sure you're communicating properly, i.e. telling your partner how you feel and how their actions affect how you feel. I think it's normal to have like squabbles and like bickering, that's fine. But if it's at a point where it's getting toxic, then that's not good. I felt heartbroken saying no. 
Oh. Well, you did the right thing, though. You did what you had to. You, yeah, you don't want to lead them on, exactly. Okay. This is our last chat advice for whoever submitted a question. So if you want to ask something right now, you can use your channel points, check the pin message. But after this one, it'll be your guys' advice for me and chat. Not me, because I'm in cell art. Cute! How do I tell my crush I like them? Hmm. We did talk about this earlier with um, Crystal's story. But, you know. I think it is cute to be like, Hey, do you like somebody? And then they're like, uh, maybe. And then they ask you back and then you're like, Well, I like you. That... That'd be adorable. Come on. It'd be a little bit cringe, but it'd be so cute. Um. <clears throat> you should only confess if you know for sure that they like you back. Because when you confess to somebody, it puts pressure on them. Like, it might make you feel better, but you don't know how to it'll make them feel, right? I think you just have to be blunt. You can't- you can drop like hints and flirt, but you just have to be blunt. And when you do tell them you like them, ask them out. You can't just say, ooh, I like you, and then run away, because that's what I did. <laughs> that's what I did like two out of the four times, and it didn't work. Because what happened was, one person, I told them I liked them, and then they were like, well, I kind of like you too, but then we never went out on a date, and then I talked to them like a month later, and they were like, yeah, you never like asked me out, so I just thought you didn't like me. And I was like, oh, <laughs> Lil Mao. Looking back, that guy would not have been good for me. He was like too... He was very immature. <laughs> Granted, this is high school. So... I would say, be blunt. Maybe tell you- tell them why you like them. If it's like a friend or whatever. But ultimately, like, ask them out. Be like, hey, you wanna like... Get a burger and a shake after school tomorrow? <laughs> but yeah, just be- just be blunt. Be clear. Don't be too vague about it. Tell them how you like them and ask them out easy. Easy. You know what else is easy? Running ads. Because guys, we are about an hour in this stream, so it's time for me to run some ads. But you can avoid that ad by subscribing for $4.99, just $5. Skip your coffee and get ad free viewing all month long. Or you can link your Amazon Prime to your, to your Twitch and hashtag sub for free with Prime. Click subscribe. See if you have a Prime sub available. Also, if you gift a sub, I will eat a chocolate. Wow. Um, after the ad, we have some advice from chat. So look forward to that. Good morning, team. Welcome to work. <laughs> Reporting to duty. Hi, Kim. Welcome in. Anyway, I gotta run an ad. So get some water, get a snack. lot faster than I thought I would. I genuinely- wait, how many questions? One. Well, I had ten questions. Oh, that was right. Yeah, about ten minutes per. No. Sixty minutes in an hour. About- I'm speeding. I genuinely thought this- Answering the questions would take two hours. I'm gonna have lots of time to do my homework today. I was gonna do my homework last night, but then I ended stream and I opened my like coding software. And then I clicked on Hassan's stream to like listen in the background and then I just watched his stream for four hours. 
Because I haven't, like, sat down and watched a stream in, like, a week because I've been, like, catching up on my stream hours. So, yeah. I died in. Okay. Welcome in. Now we're going to read what you guys submitted for advice from both myself and the chat room. Why isn't it focusing on me? Goddamn $300 lens. Okay, there was a lot. You guys sent a lot of advice. <coughs> First. <coughs> this one I thought was cute. This one was adorable. With crushes, take it slowly. Get to know them. This one is adorable. I was reading this one, I was like, oh, this is cute. Um, okay, so they said, take it slow with three W's. Get to know them and start gradually dropping cute, subtle hints. <laughs> this is so cute. Um, yeah, get to know. It's so cute. Because, like, this... This is assuming from the perspective of, like, someone you admire, not someone you necessarily know, right? Like, someone you just see in the hallways during school or something. Or, like, someone you see at, like, the coffee shop. I think it's so cute! Because <laughs> I think this is running off of the idea of, like, not love at first sight, because I don't think that's real. Like, I still think you need to know somebody before you can seriously pursue them. But definitely... Know a bit more about their character before you do confess or ask them out. Because you never know what somebody's gonna be like once you see their true colors, right? Man, yeah, I just thought this one was cute. This one was so wholesome. <laughs> but this one, not... I think this is pretty standard advice. But it's still cute. Me being the most transparent chatter here. Did you submit a question? I don't think you did, Titans. Next. Very important. Everybody get your no your notepads out. Write this down. <laughs> Sorry, I was posing. <laughs> Since I'm not dating anyone, sad. Sad day. Me neither, man. Okay, if you see a red flag, get out. Once you encounter a red flag, like one that you wouldn't let slide if you were meeting a new friend, then don't let your partner do it either. It could lead to future fights or a possible breakup. Valid. I think you also need to identify what your personal red flags and boundaries are. Um, for example, a red flag could be um, texting you too much. Or looking through your phone. What's another one? Um, calling you names. Because those aren't necessarily more extreme forms of abuse, but they are signs of an unhealthy partner. So, there are like lists of red flags you can see online, talk to your friends. But identify what your deal breakers are and stick to them. Because if you let things slide, then your partner will understand that you don't respect your personal boundaries and they will keep pushing those boundaries. Is having no friends a red flag? That's one that I've seen and that's what I'm kind of scared about because I don't have many friends. Um, I only really talk to one person regularly. Everybody else I don't really talk to. And I think... It's hard because it's something that is my red flag. I have no, I have no friends. Um, I think you need to identify why they don't have many friends and figure out why they have difficulty maintaining those friendships because it could be an issue of that individual not being able to communicate properly, um, respecting boundaries between like friends or partners. Or maybe they're just voluntarily isolating themselves. I personally, I isolate myself. You know, depression and anxiety does that, and it fucking sucks. 
Um, so I would have to say having no friends is a red flag, but you still need to identify why it happens. Like there are obviously some more, there are some flags that are more serious, like a red, like a, I guess you could see a light red flag could be somebody being rude to service workers. That's kind of like scummy, but that's not going to harm you versus a like more severe one to where maybe they punch walls. That is a case that is a red flag. That one could harm you one day. So you need to like if identify what your red flags are. Identify what your deal breakers are. Deal breakers being um, red flags that you will not tolerate. And then identify which red flags you feel not that you can look past but that you can understand. Because there is no such thing as a perfect person. If you're waiting to find the perfect person, that's not gonna fucking happen. Okay, life is meant to be... Um, turbulent. Like, everybody goes through trauma, everybody has negative and positive life experiences, so you can't expect somebody to be perfect, but then you also can't expect to change somebody. I'm perfect, Kappa. Yeah, I, I definitely being rude to service workers is one that I don't like, but I feel like that comes down to lack of perspective because it's not like they're gonna like start fights like in the McDonald's lobby. Because I think being empathetic and kind to people is a learned behavior. Because some people are just inherently narcissistic narcissistic and that's fine but that's something that they kind of have to unlearn i think being entitled became way more transparent during the pandemic exactly you got to see a lot of people's true characters based on how they interacted with the public if they got vaccinated if they wear a mask there are so many indicators that reflect one's true morality through their actions anyway get boosted <laughs> Next. Identify what you want in a partner. Very important. Um, have unbreakables. Things being... Wait, things someone has to have for you... Wait, fuck. I wrote this wrong. Okay. Have unbreakables. Things that someone has to have for you to be with them. Example, emotional intelligence aligned political thinking, etc. Um, yeah. Figure out what you want from your partner in the sense of, do you want something casual? Do you want someone who will, like, emotionally support you? Do you want somebody to spend time with? Do you want somebody to, like, go out and have fun with? Because you don't want to go into the relationship having different expectations. You will see, um, the cliche of, oh, we are hooking up we are banging, but I caught feelings. Uh-oh. Um, if that happens, then that means having something casual is not what you wanted. Inherently. You need to figure out what you want before you pursue somebody and potentially hurt them or hurt yourself. <clears throat> because you don't want to try a relationship if they're, like, too immature and you want somebody more mature. You don't want to pursue somebody... If they have red flags that you might have not known about, right? I think it also comes down to, like, you need to figure out yourself before you identify what you want as well. But very good. Okay. Don't force a relationship. It's okay to be single. It's okay. <laughs> um, don't try so hard to seek a relationship to the point where it feels forced. Just let it happen naturally. It's okay to not be in a romantic relationship. You don't need one to be happy. Valid. This is kind of how I feel right now. Sad. <laughs> I bet a single person said that. Says you. Says you. <laughs> 
I think this also could be um, interpreted as if you are in, an, in a relationship and you know it's not working, don't try to force it. Like, if you feel like they put, aren't putting an equal effort or if they aren't trying, don't try to make them try. Because if they aren't trying, then it probably won't work. It, I don't think this means that you should not see people casually either, because some people want casual relationships. But don't try to force a long-term relationship if you know it's not going to work. There's so many people out there. I know it, it's, it sucks hearing that. If you are, like, possibly going to break up with somebody, but... If it's not meant to be, then it's not meant to be. Am I gonna cry? No. <laughs> okay. There are a lot of advice similar to this one, but I wanted to touch on like a slightly different tangent for each one. Okay. Focus on self-love before getting into a long-term relationship. Valid. Um, this is kind of something that I experienced. Um... Because the main reason um, my previous partner and I broke up was because we both had, like, unresolved personal issues that interfered with the relationship. So, this is something that I had to learn. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I think it's very easy to say you need to love yourself before you can love another. But that is a very difficult thing to do. And if you feel like you have a lot of self-doubt or anxiety or if you're experiencing like depressive ideology without being diagnosed, seek a counselor. Because you need to learn and learn the tools in order to help yourself before you can commit fully to another. Because you, you kind of have to learn to love yourself. And if you are on that journey, it will be hard, but given the tools, you will learn how, how to over time. And that's kind of what I'm doing now, because I, be honest, to be honest, I don't like myself too much. And there's reasons why I think that way, but you don't want to let those feelings um, interfere with your interpersonal relationships. You need to learn how to tackle them on your own. You can't expect someone to love you and not have those feelings of self-doubt go away. Because once that person is no longer there, you only have yourself. Okay, sorry, chatters, don't hate yourself, love yourself. You will learn how to over time. I've definitely learned. Um, it all comes down to changing your perspective of yourself. Because I saw this one. I've been getting, like, so many, um, like, philosophical TikToks and stuff. If I knew you IRL, I would totally buy you Wingstop. Thank you. <laughs> You're a real one. Um... Wait, what was I saying? I had a really good point. Fuck. <laughs> oh, wait, I saw a TikTok. I saw a TikTok the other day. And it was like, you know, a person like looking sad and then just text on the screen and sad music. And it was basically saying, if you can look at other people and not know that I'm at all, like, Referring to, like, online media and, like, social media. If you can like that person and not know them, but you also don't like yourself, then that's a problem because how can you put so much love into another and not see yourself in a similar light? Meaning, you are capable of feeling love for a person. You just need to change your mentality and see yourself in that way. Guys, 
<laughs> My emotions are so easily influenced by music. Is that a red flag? No, this is intentionally made to get- Did it, Has anybody cried yet? Any criers? <laughs> um... Yeah, it's very difficult to kind of like unteach yourself to think negatively, but you will get there. It takes time. No, not yet? Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, anyway. You gotta learn how to love yourself. I'm not crying. I was- like, when I was- cause like, for all these cue cards, I was thinking of like, how to answer it, and this was the one that made me like, upset. <laughs> I was like, damn. <laughs> What is this? It's hard to love yourself when you feel there's nothing to love. Don't think that way. There's always something. I will share something really quick. Um... During one of my first few therapy sessions, uh, my therapist had me list off things that I liked about myself. And so first she had me list my hobbies, like what I like to do. And I said, you know, I like watching... <laughs> I, I didn't say anime. I said, I like watching, you know, YouTube. I like drawing. I like doing this. And then... The next question was, what do you like about yourself? And I struggled. And- Sorry, I'm- I'm like- I'm not tearing up, I'm getting close. I'm getting close. Oh fuck, oh no, believers in shambles. I'm not crying, I'm not crying. Um... I'm actually tearing up, fuck. It only counts if a tear falls, okay? Um... So, I struggled to like, list three things. And... I put, you know, I was like, I think I'm caring. I think I'm... Um... I think I'm empathetic. I th And then I, I struggle with the third thing. And... She was like, that's okay. She's like, you know... You just said you like drawing, so you're creative. That's an admirable thing. And I was like... Oh. Like... Sorry, I'm not... No tears have fallen yet. No tears have fallen yet. Have you ever cried on stream? Oh my god. Clippers. Megan cries live on stream. <laughs> um, But I think that just proves... Obviously, in that scenario, like, I had an outside person, like, talking to me directly. But after she said that and pointed it out, it kind of forced me to reflect and be like, oh... That's how other people see me. But... I couldn't... Because you're, you're always going to be hyper-focused on your own self-perspective. But you also need to acknowledge what other people see in you. Okay, I'm good now. I haven't, I haven't cried. I haven't cried yet. Fuck. But yeah, you, it just it takes a while. So if you feel... Like, you have that residual doubt. It's okay. Seek help if you need to, because they will give you the tools on how to kind of change your mindset and mentality. But know that there are people who appreciate you. It's better to let it out, I guess. Also, can I just say, Coax is a good chatter. A funny chatter, too. They do spam ha huh a bit too much. <laughs> but if you're feeling... And I mean in general. If you're not appreciated or cared for, I appreciate all my chatters. The lurkers are great, but I don't know y'all. So I appreciate all my chatters. And I hope that how I conduct myself makes you feel appreciated. Wait, checking, checking. No tears. No tears. 
Holy. See, like, whenever I talk about shit, I get emotional. Okay, anyway. We have a lot more to get through. <laughs> oh my god, hi, Georgia! Or, Geo. <laughs> Welcome in. Can we get some yo's? If I cry after stream, does it count? Genuinely, thank you. That really did touch me. Thank you. I I can tell when some people might be struggling, and that's okay. I understand that we can't necessarily share all the time, but I hope that whenever anybody watches the stream, it makes them feel a little bit better. And I think... It's also nice to kind of hear that reassurance sometimes, too. So I'm glad you feel a bit better, man. Did I come at a bad time? No, you came at the perfect time. You're fine. We're goofing and gaffing now, right? We're smiling. Everybody, peace I too smile. We're having fun now. Next. <laughs> Yeah, have a healthy relationship with yourself before pursuing someone. True, very similar. Wait, we didn't even joke on this one. Fuck. <laughs> Wait, let me finish this one. Um, this one was funny. <laughs> um, but he said, remember to find their embarrassing secrets so you can use it against them when you break up. Zanny face emoji. Time they use the Zandy face emoji 14 times. <laughs> but obviously they're trolling, they're trolling, but this one's funny. Um <laughs> Yeah, egg there out. See, like a part of me wishes that I could have like ended our relationship on bad terms. Because then that would kind of justify ending it, right? But I feel like it's worse if you end on good terms. I don't know. But obviously, don't blackmail people. Don't do that, dude. I love the heart for the period. Thank you. I think it's cute. Also, if you look at some of the letters, like look at the G. There's a heart in the tail. So any letter that has a tail in the Y, too, has a heart. feeling and having dirt on people is such a rush. I mean, excuse me, I would never weaponize it. <laughs> okay, now we're serious now. Um, have a healthy relationship with yourself before pursuing someone. This one, I think is very important. Going back to the theme of, like, liking yourself and not expecting a relationship to fix that self-love. I think you need to identify how you yourself works and thinks that way because it'll help you effectively communicate with any future partner you have and I think healthy can also mean not using your partner's praise or adoration to hide any self-doubts that you have I'm not saying that you shouldn't pursue someone if you aren't fully there yet, but you still need to acknowledge it. Because I think a partner can kind of help you find that love for yourself, like reassuring you or telling you what they like about you. Like how I told with that therapy story, like having somebody physically lay it out for you can help. But that can't be the only thing. You still have to have your own self-worth be substantial enough to where you can stand on your own. Smile. Whew. Damn, I got so close to crying. Holy... My ear hurts. My neck hurts. I need 
a better pillow. I heard that sniffle. No! No, there's no tears. There's no tears. No, guys. Why would I lie? There's like nothing on the line. I didn't do any stakes for myself. It's just channel points. Why would I lie? I would never lie. We got her. <laughs> I would never lie. If I cried, imagine how many clips I could farm. It's better if I cry. Guys. Okay, next. <laughs> if you'll be a liar, shut the fuck up. Don't. You just don't. <laughs> Dude, I hate my stutter. It's for the clout? Yeah, but if I cried, I would get clout. So if I don't cry, I'm losing. So why would I lie about not crying? You guys are brain dead. Okay, don't, just don't. This one? Don't, just don't. Interesting. I think this is one of the people who answered that love isn't real. So maybe they got burned in the past, or maybe they haven't found someone yet, or someone hasn't found them. I would say, similar to the one earlier, don't force a relationship if you aren't ready or they aren't ready. <clears throat> I think this person was hurt. Yeah, I think so too. But I think, in a bigger sense... Don't be scared to fall for someone. Aw, oh, thank you, Crystal. You guys are too cute. Like I said, I don't know who submitted what, but... Yeah. yeah. Don't- I think the better thing is don't be scared. And don't be immediately opposed to the idea of having somebody care for you. Because there always will be somebody, whether it be platonic or romantic. <clears throat> okay. PDA is cute, but be mindful of others. This one is interesting. Um, <laughs> another essay. I wonder who this one is. Is this diary entry number two? The way you wrote the cards is really nice. Yeah, thank you. I thought it honestly would be cute if I wrote them out. Because like I said earlier, I was going to like make graphics. Okay, my initial idea for the stream was I was going to do like a wide angle shot of my couch. And I was going to have me sitting on it and then Pikachu on the other end. And then I was going to make like little speech bubbles with the questions. So it would look like Pikachu was asking. But I thought the cute cards were cuter and it makes better screenshots. <laughs> Dear Diary, day two. <laughs> I don't know if it's Crystal, but honestly, come on. <laughs> no, it's not double submitting, because one of the questions was, do you want advice? And then the second question was, can you give advice? Okay, this one. If I ever see y'all getting all cute and happy with your partner in public, on the outside I may look like I'm admiring, like, aww, with five W's. But on the inside I'm screaming and crying, so maybe keep it to yourself. One eyebrow raised emoji. <laughs> this is me? Of course. Of course. Um, I don't know what you meant by this. Is this kind of like you're jealous of people? Or you're just disgusted by people showing their love for each other? <laughs> when I was writing this cue card, I was like, how do I make this sound nice? I was like, huh? <laughs> it's me waiting for my turn. Then you're just fucking jealous. You're jealous. Wait your turn. Um, I think my main takeaway is don't be fucking making out in public. You know, holding hands is cute. Hugging is cute. A hand around their waist is cute. But I don't want to see you, like, groping each other. Are these cards all chat submitted? Yes. Yes, they are. Because we did a quiz this past weekend. About like Valentine's questions. Yeah, don't be don't be groping each other. <laughs> okay, trigger warning. Serious topic. Trigger warning. Sorry. 
Someone who loves you would never hurt you. Oh, we touched on this briefly yesterday. But I think this could be interpreted in many ways. It could mean, like, emotionally. Like, someone who has, like, for example, like, cheated on you. Or if someone has, like, created an unsafe environment, like, if they are abusive physically or emotionally. I think this is the right way to, like, see it. Right? Someone who loves you would never hurt you. But I think when it comes to, like, trial and tribulation in a relationship, there are times where people will mess up. And that's okay, but you still need to learn how to navigate it. There are obviously points where things should not be forgiven. Like, i.e. instances of, like, abuse. Right? Because that is not okay. If somebody is calling you names or, like, physically harming you, that's not okay. You are not deserving of that. There are resources in your local area. There are resources nationally you can contact. Don't think that if someone is consistently harming you, that they love you. Because that's not love. Um, like, I, I've had discussions with friends who've experienced trauma and abuse at the... Not necessarily the hands of their partner, but... It's hard because if you are a victim, it's very difficult to kind of stop caring for that person. But you should know that there are people who will support you, people who will help you get out of a situation, because you are not deserving of that harm. And whoever needs to hear it, there it is. It's very easy to think that even if there was love and care earlier and then the dynamic changes, it won't change back to how it was before. Because in instances of abuse, it's about control. So if they know that they can harm you and keep doing it, it won't stop. So don't feel like you're alone in it. This happens to a lot of people. And it's usually an instance of them not knowing what is going on. Because it's very easy to see things from an outside perspective if you're not experiencing it. But then in turn, it's hard to see it from an outside perspective if you're living it and experiencing it. Yeah. Like, I was reading, as I was, like, thinking of how to answer this, I was looking up articles and stuff. And one of the articles I was looking at was explaining how somebody can still love somebody who was, like, abusive to them. And a lot of it is because of, like, unresolved, like, personal trauma. Or, um, you experiencing this cycle of abuse to where um, basically what it is there's like um, an instance of harm verbal or physical and then kind of the makeup period where they might like buy you a gift or like be really nice to you and then there's the calm and then you feel like everything's normal but then it happens again so when you're stuck in that loop it's very easy to think that it will get better but it probably won't. Because to me, somebody who is capable of abusing another has their own unresolved issues, but they should not be putting it on you. Um, and you, you should not have to be dealing with it. It doesn't matter if it's like a parental figure or a partner or a friend. That should never be used to justify harming another. Um, 
I hope I explain that well. It's hard. It's hard talking about those type of things for me. Because I've experienced some forms, not physical. But, um... And not from a previous partner. It's from, like, other figures in my life. And whenever I, like, talk about it, all I can think about is, like, what I've experienced and the, like, what um, people I know have experienced. And it's hard because everyone I've talked to has felt like they deserved it. When in reality, it's just the other person projecting and not facing their own demons. And it, it's sad. Anyway, next advice. <laughs> um, young love is fleeting, so don't take it too seriously. This one was interesting. Let me explain. Um, I'd say that relationships shouldn't be taken too seriously if you're young. And that it's no problem if you happen to break up with that person. I don't know if this is a good take. I don't know. I still included it because... I don't know if this is like trolling or not. Because... I low-key disagree. I, I disagree too. Because I think the line that was like opposing to me... It was where it says, it's no problem if you happen to break up with that person because you're young. How young we talking? That's what I was thinking too, because I think most of my viewers are like high school and then college age. But... I think once you're in like high school or early college, that's when like relationships get more serious, right? When I, when I say serious, I mean like... A committed relationship, right? Yeah. When I... The only time that I wouldn't take a relationship seriously is like middle school. Where you guys are just holding hands. Right? <laughs> and that's like as far as you go. <laughs> but to me, the way this was written... It made it seem like... There's something there... That they don't want to face... Like, maybe they had a dynamic to where their partner cared more than they did. And maybe it's an instance of... Who hurt them in kindergarten? Maybe it's an instance... Bro, my ear just popped. Okay, you know how when your ear pops it gets, like, really echoey? Holy, that was scary. Okay. But maybe if you feel like you shouldn't take it seriously, maybe you aren't ready for a relationship. Thoughts? Because obviously there's like cases to where you can want something casual and you can bang and that's cool. But you don't want to lead someone on if you, if you don't want someone serious, but they want something serious, then that's not going to work. I don't like this take. Bad advice. I don't like it. Because, to me, not taking something seriously means that maybe there wasn't enough care that you felt. Or you aren't capable of caring. Because when I see the word relationship, I see commitment. I don't... I don't think it means casual. I don't know. Somebody throw this one away. Bad. Don't screenshot this one. Okay, next. <gasps> confess your feelings. Okay, always confess your feelings. It works 20 times out of 100 or more. <laughs> I mean, I guess go for it. 
Like I said earlier, only confess if you feel like they feel the same. But what's- okay, honestly, what's the worst that could happen? Because, like, when you do confess to somebody, it does put a little bit of pressure on them. But it's either they like you, and you go out, or you don't- or they don't like you, and then you move on. So why not confess? Yeah. It's a 20% chance. They say no and everything gets awkward and you stop talking and you cry. But like I said earlier, if they can't look past it, then that friendship wouldn't have lasted anyway. <clears throat> right? And are you really being a friend if you like them? Sorry, I knocked my phone. might have them you might have them in class and it causes drama that's what high school is baby <laughs> it's meant to be drama that's why you confess before winter break before spring break before summertime that way if it doesn't work out you aren't gonna see them and then by the time you get back from break everybody will like chirp about it during the break but then not give a fuck when you get back easy Hey, next. Put equal effort into a relationship. Who knew? Okay. You must give to receive, but if you're giving and they aren't giving anything back or matching that energy, then leave. It's a waste of time. True. True. If people want different things, then it's not gonna work. Did anyone have the same advice? A lot of them were similar, but I still tried to keep them separate. I think that's all I really need to say on this one. <laughs> I think um, if you identify that they aren't putting enough effort in, then you need to ask them about it. Dude, I've seen so many like text chains on TikTok of like, hey, I feel like we've grown distance. And then they're like, do you want to break up? And they're like, no, I don't want to. But then they argue and then they break up. So I can understand why that conversation is like kind of scary. But I think if somebody is distancing themselves, there's probably like an underly underlying reason why. It could be like unresolved trauma from a previous relationship. It could be them just being busy. It could be them not wanting to put more effort in. And I think that is a conversation that needs to be had in order to see if that relationship will keep working. Because what's the point in putting so much time and care into someone if they aren't willing to make it work? Harsh, but true. <laughs> two more, guys, two more. Oh, also, um, we are a little over 30 minutes in the stream, so it's time for me to tell you. If you're new here, follow the channel. If you're, you get cool emotes and you get to tap in chat. Any new follows? Mod check? Ooh, I did dinner prep this morning. And I made mabu tofu, which is... You can put ground beef, but I put turkey because it's slightly healthier. Tofu, and then it's like this sauce that comes in a packet. It's a Chinese sauce. It's kind of like a fermenti -y, a little bit spicy. But I made it this morning for dinner prep for the next few days. And I didn't get to eat it. Like, I, I tasted it, but I didn't have it for me. So that's going to be my lunch, and I'm so excited. Sorry. It's the little things that make me happy, okay? Uh, that's all I could think about this morning. I was like, oh, I can't wait till lunch. Okay, next. Easy. Straightforward. Communicate effectively. Easy. Um, they said, I would say be as communicative as you be. Parentheses, someone with no experience. Or someone with no experience. I don't know if they meant communicate like 
I do? Or keep, be as communicative as you, in general, are able to? I don't know what they meant. I was confused. But, either way, um, communicate effectively, because I think people think just communicating in the sense of saying what you're feeling is all you need to do. But effectively means you have to be willing to share and also being willing to res be receptive to what they respond back with. In general, oh, Lamau, <laughs> good one. <laughs> I was like, like me, huh? I feel like I'm decent. But okay. Um, similar to earlier, how you have the structure of when you do blank, it makes me feel blank because blank. Because you need to communicate in a way to where it encourages them to understand your perspective and be empathetic. Because some people struggle with understanding what other people think or feel. Um, you just need to explain your perspective. And you also need to be willing to listen to their perspective as well. Um, but you also need to like identify when they're comfortable to share as well. You can't force someone to communicate if they aren't ready. Okay, last one, everybody. Last one. Man, I was speedrunning today. Holy. Yeah, this one's cute. Basic. But so true. Um. Pretty straightforward. I think it's very easy to think in order to in order to like get the person you want you have to do this this and this or dress or act a certain way but if you aren't true to yourself in the sense of like your self-expression how you conduct yourself sharing your true feelings then they're not gonna like you for you and that's not gonna work in the long term I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna cry. This one isn't sad. This one's wholesome. We got over. This is like a movie. There's rising action, the climax, and then falling action. This is wholesome. I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> but yeah, be yourself. Easy. Whoever wrote this is a basic ass bitch. <laughs> um <laughs> let's just go through all the cue cards oh yeah let's end the prediction did i cry no i did did anybody cry i got very close i started tearing up you could tell my face is getting red but i didn't shed a tear i did not shed a tear let's go doubters I want to see who won. Who got the points? Oh, they all went to Kobobo. They already have enough points. Okay, everybody get your mouses ready. Get your fingers ready. We're going to do screenshots. Do you want any cue cards? <laughs> this one's stupid. This one's stupid. This has to be Mag. Mag said they were gonna be here today. Fuck Mag. When you're watching the bed, fuck you. Or watching the bot. Why'd you show my essay? Because it's funny! It's funny. I feel weird looking at the camera for these. <laughs> Should I be like, Kesb? What are we screenshotting for? I don't know. If anybody wants, like, it's kind of like words of motivation. So I don't know. 
if you want to. Let's see, which one would I screenshot, actually? None of these. <laughs> I was gonna, like, make a thread on Twitter of, like, like, my favorite advice that I talked about today, but then I realized Twitter video can only do two minutes, and if each question was five minutes, then I'd have to go back and edit, so I'm like, fuck that, I'm not doing that. <laughs> okay, so that was all the questions, and now we're on to the chat advice. This one was so cute. I'm trying to like, do a different face. <laughs> Just the code switch. Okay, this one, I would screenshot myself. This one would be one that I would screenshot if I was watching. I wonder who- I wonder who did this one. Which little troll did this one? I think I know who. Put your predictions in chat. <laughs> I don't see. <laughs> Caspian? I don't think Caspian submitted. This one too is important. Very important. I don't like this one. That's why I'm mad. <laughs> yes, boo! <laughs> so I'm just farming my emotes. I'm like, yeah. I've done, like, so much ever since we added the Peace I 2 Gasp. It's so funny. I'll do it IRL, too. I'm like... Oh, the last one. Wait, can I do a heart? No. All done. Okay, we're done farming. Did, I, did anybody actually screenshot? I was partially memeing, but I don't know. Did anyone actually? I don't care. Should I keep these? Tab one. When I'm rich and famous, we'll auction them for a million apiece. You screenshotted one? Let's go! I was trolling, but I don't know. I want it- oh, fuck. I want it today to be like... A bit hard hitting, but also kind of cute, you know? That's why I went with cute cards. Okay, chaz! It is time to end stream. I thought I was gonna go for three hours. Oh. Sorry. I don't have ticks, but I think I might. Okay, so, Charles, I would like to thank you all for hanging out today. Thank you for spilling your hearts and your guts today. Um, if you're new here, follow the channel because I'm gonna run an ad right now. And then we'll do calligraphy. 
So, don't sag, don't sag. Um, so don't worry. After the ad, we will do some calligraphy. So anybody who donates to the channel or uses their channel points will get their name written. So if you want to avoid that ad, all you gotta do is subscribe for $4.99, just $5. Skip your coffee and get ad reviewing all month long. Or you can link your Risen Prime to your Twitch and hashtag sub for free with Prime. Click subscribe. See if you have a Prime sub available. Also, if you give the sub, I will eat a chocolate. Because we're farming. Um, yeah. Sorry, I feel good now. My ear still fucking hurts. Okay, anyway, get some money, get a snack. We'll see some of you guys in a few. Sober, all bully. Yeah. You got gifted, Kim, so you shut up. <laughs> you shut up. Real fans, tier three. <laughs> I don't think I've ever... Yeah, I've never gotten any higher tier subs. And chatters, don't don't sub at a higher tier. It's a scam. Don't do it. You don't get any extra anything. So, it's kind of not worth. All you get is, like, clout. I got laid off. Oh. I'm sorry. Never mind. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Cancel me. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Why are you trauma dumping in my chat room, Kim? You should get banned. <laughs> but damn, that sucks. Hopefully you'll get another job lined up soon, man. Doesn't it last for longer? What? You happy you got laid off? Okay. Save. I'm on vacation. Let's go. <laughs> That's so good. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, the phrase cam froze. Hold. Everybody hold. Oh my god, what is this? Holy moly, are these sketch cards? Anybody who gives five subs will get a sketch card drawn at the end of the month. No, tier subs do not last for longer. The benefits you get from a tier sub is you give your streamer more money. They still have the same rev split as a regular tier one. And sometimes you um, get exclusive emotes, but I personally don't have any. Because I personally think if somebody is going to pay to subscribe, I think everybody should have equal access to my emotes. I will sing a song? Okay. Never mind, we're not doing calligraphy yet. Should we change the title? No, we can't get the title for now. Hmm, what song should I sing? Peace I too. Hmm. <laughs> Isn't it weird that the sketch cards always manage to sneak their way into the journal? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird, huh? <laughs> it's so stupid. Nah, I'm I'm plugging, I'm plugging. Oh, this is wrong. Sing a love song? No. I say that for your moms. Oh, I was, I was, you know the song Love Song by Sarah Pirelli? <laughs> Cause you asked for it, cause you need one. Can you see? I'm not gonna sing the whole chorus. Wait, hold oh, on, oh, look at this. Wait, guys, guys. Okay. My sister, the... She sometimes will use my YouTube account because I have, like, movies downloaded onto it. Look what she saved in my library. SpongeBob's Greatest Hits. <laughs> Dude, a fucking child. <laughs> okay. Holy. I don't know that song. I can't sing a song that I don't know, okay? I'm looking, I'm looking. <clears throat> Ooh, maybe I can try this one. Should I try... Um, Big Girls Don't Cry Personal by Fergie. Maybe I can try this one. 
<clears throat> I will try it. Are you guys ready? I ain't singing Umbrella. My range isn't there yet. Okay, I'm ready. Um, if you want to sing other clips of me singing, I have a playlist on YouTube. If you all could type your favorite animated, your favorite hype emotes in the chat, that'd be great. <clears throat> I'm going to try and do the final verse for Big Girls Don't Cry by Fergie. It's been a while since I've sung this one, just in general. I think the last time I sang this on stream was literally a year ago. <clears throat> okay, guys ready? Get your emotes ready. <clears throat> like the little school night in the schoolyard will play Jack send no cards. I'll be your best friend and you'll be mine. Valentine Yes, you can hold my hand if you want to Cause I wanna hold yours too We'll be playmates and lovers and share our secret worlds but it's time for me to go home. It's getting late, dark outside. I need to be with myself in center. Clarity, peace, serenity. I usually don't go that low, holy. <clears throat> I ain't doing the chorus. I can't do it. <clears throat> but was it good? I haven't done that in a long time. I, I sang it at a slower tone, or not tone, lower pace than how it's supposed to be. Wait, I can try the chorus. <clears throat> 10 out of 10, thank you. <laughs> no, I can't do the chorus. I can't do it. I, I can't do it without listening to it. Damn. The chorus is difficult, though. Okay, calligraphy time! Wait, can, can you guys see the tags on my stream? I rearranged them, and my top five tags are Sub for free with Prime, LGBTQIA, TTS, W, Riz, and AMA. <laughs> I changed them last night. I think it's hilarious. I think we'll keep W, Riz as a tag. Oh my god, what is this? Huh? Okay, so no Oilers today, but that's fine. We had two people redeem. Oh, once again, thank you, Kim, for redeeming. Thank you. Has anyone found you through tags? Like, 1% of my viewers. Oh no, um, Twitch changed, like, their, um, analytics, how they show them. And I got a lot of my discoverability through the LGBTQIA tag before they added the plus. So, yeah. The reason why I don't have the LGBTQIA plus tag is because not many people search with the plus icon. Because in order to use the plus icon, you have to do shift plus, and not many people search that. So that's why I don't use it in my tag. It's dumb. Anyway. Um, what was I looking for? <laughs> okay, so I need... Let's do green for keyword today. <clears throat> my bank account can't afford any more oil, and that's fine. 
I'm broke too. Remember when I used to do gifted sub stakes every week? I gifted my chat 200 subs last- or 100 plus subs last year. Bye, Crystal! Yeah, we definitely need an update. I don't know if I'll stream tomorrow, but for sure, if I don't stream tomorrow, I'm streaming on Valentine's Day. Okay, so if you want me to write your name, we have one name left. You can use your channel points or donate to the channel. Last call. Yeah, good luck, Crystal. Hopefully it... Hopefully it goes well. Hopefully it's a Hallmark movie. Lime? Okay. Thank you, Kobobo. Any other redeemers? Also, when we have the kitchen set up, I'm gonna try and get two cams. Because if anybody watches the art channel, remember that one other USB cam I used? I think I can use that one. Because I might use, like, the high-def camera for, like, decorating POV. If we do cookies. Oh, I mean, I don't know if we're doing cookies or not. So I might use the HD camera for, um, cookie POV. And then the... Because, like, the DSLR is, like, basically 4K. It's capable of 4K. But the USB camera is, um, a 720. That's why it looks super stretched on my 1080p regular stream res. So I'm gonna try and get that other 720p cam set up for a kitchen. That way we can have two cams. We can have a wide angle and then a close POV. Okay, this is our last name, so last call. Last call. Any other redeemers or oilers? <laughs> <laughs> okay, five, four, three, two, and one. We're done. We're done. I would like to thank everybody for watching, any chatters or lurkers, I appreciate you all. I know today got a bit heavier, but it was still fun. I hope what I had to share and give advice on was helpful for some. If it wasn't, then... Awkward. <laughs> um, but if you're new here and like what you see, and you've watched the whole stream, or just a part of it, click the follow button. One click. It's easy, hashtag free to follow. And if you're already following, make sure your notifications turn on that we don't miss a single stream. Um, I might be live tomorrow. I'll see how I feel, because I'm honestly really tired. Um, if not, I for sure will be live on Valentine's Day for our POV I Make You Lunch. Because we are, we are apparently are 90% single, so nobody else has nothing to do on Valentine's. So y'all better be here, because I'll be alone too. 
<laughs> okay. Um, before I go, please make sure you all, if you're a real fan, follow my offline social media. I have a Twitter, Instagram, and a TikTok. So if you aren't already, um, go follow my IG. We don't have- I don't, I don't post often. But go follow my IG. One day, Copium I'll post. <laughs> okay, I had fun today. I will see you all later. Oh, make sure your notifications are on. If you already have them on, make sure you follow me on Twitter too, because Twitch, not fuck, Twitch notifications are silly. Okay, I'll see you guys later. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye. Bye, Kim. Okay, bye, guys. Dude, I got so close to crying. I got, I was like, so close. Holy. The levers almost pulled through, my god. But today was fun. I know a lot of people are looking forward to today. I hope what I had to share was helpful. I'm glad to hear that, Wolf. Not that life is getting busy, but glad you had a good time. <laughs> but yeah, it's always a pleasure when we can see you in chat. Oh, you're off until Friday? Let's fucking go, dude. Saru. Saru. Remember when that was like the meme phrase? Wait, I, what time did I run the ad? I'll end stream in 45 seconds. Because ending stream is for subs. That's why we run an ad. That way non-subs get boomed. That way we can hang out for a little bit. Um. Yeah, Megan? Okay. <laughs> I have a bit- I have a bit planned for Tuesday. I'm not gonna leak. Five subs and I'll leak it right now. <laughs> I'm kidding. Homework time? Well, I'm glad stream was shorter, because I have a lot of homework to do, too. I mean, it's probably only gonna take two hours, but still. Man, today was fun. I do have a headache, though. <laughs> I feel like today was a bit too much for my brain. <laughs> Okay, PSA to big brain emote will happen. It will happen. I just need to pose a better picture. Okay, I'll end stream now. Bye, guys. Thank you all for hanging out. It was fun. Um. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye.